Shane, come in. Revolution, come in. Hello to all those in training to become a Super Saiyan and welcome to Revolution. After speaking to many fans in the Dragon Ball community, I have come to realise that only a minority of the fanverse understand what the picture on display represents. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to give a detailed analysis of what this picture represents and break down the construct of this macroverse so you can get a clearer understanding of how powerful the characters in Super have gotten, especially the god tier characters like Vegeta and Goku. What is a macroverse you ask? Well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and explain it as clearly as possible to you. Most of us have an understanding of what the term universe means. I mean, it may be a big concept for us, but nonetheless, it's something we can grasp fairly easily. It's all of our existence, the existence of all creatures and things around us, the planet, the solar system, and our galaxy. And not just our galaxy, the multitude of other galaxies and everything within them. So basically, it's... The, the term universe encompasses everything. So you ask again, so what exactly is this macroverse? Is it some new form of poetry? Well, the, the easiest way I can describe this, guys, is if you've ever seen Inception, it's kind of like a dream within a dream. The theory of macroverse, our universe is only one of many that exists within an uber universe. And those uber universe is combined to an even greater universe and on and on. I highly recommend looking into the theory of macroverses. The possibilities are absolutely endless as it's so expansive. They are just infinite possibilities. So how does that relate to Dragon Ball? Well, let's go back to that picture. And the part that I want to point out to you is on the bottom half of the sphere, the mortal universe part. That part depicts where we reside on our current Earth, the Universe 7 Earth, as well as characters like Goku, Vegeta, Gohan and Piccolo, as well as the rest of the universe such as Namek and planet Vegeta until it got destroyed. So Had the mortal it. universe makes this up globe one is part split into two halves as you of can the see, macroverse. with the bottom half being the mortal universe. The top half, however, is the cosmos. And the cosmos inhabits a lot of Dragon Ball lore. Right split in the middle is Hell, where Frieza currently resides. And above that is the realm of the living, which is divided into four quadrants based on the cardinal directions, each ruled by a Kai chosen among the core people from World Core. Central to these quadrants is the check-in station, and from this check-in station is where you can take Snake Way, which will lead you to the King Kai's planet in the North Quadrant. And also from this check-in station, you can reach the other cardinal points, East, South and West. The check-in station is where the mortals from the mortal universe check in and it's decided upon whether they will be going to Hell or the giant planet in the middle of the cosmos, Heaven. And Grand Kai's planet just happens to reside above heaven. The planet of the Supreme Kais, the top tier deities, also known as the gods of creation, watch over both the cosmos and the mortal universe. The planet of the Supreme Kais is actually located on the outside of the globe. I'm sure many of you remember the epic battle between Kid Buu and Goku and the others on the Supreme Kais planet in the Buu saga. This planet orbits around the globe, and last but not least, at the tip of the universe, right at the very bottom, is where the demon realm Supreme Kai's live, otherwise known as Makaiashin. We haven't seen any of these Makaiashin as of yet, but Toriyama has mentioned them in an interview, so maybe we'll see some in the future. 
So with the mortal universe being the same size as our real life universe, and that only being one half of this globe, that must mean there are at least two universes. Then, let's add the fact that the supreme world of the Kais is orbiting around the globe, and the added circumference that this brings, as well as the Mikaioshin realm. Add these two together, and you could quite easily get another universe. So, this universe that we see, for example, Universe 7, is three times the equivalent of our real-life universe. Hence, why it is a universe within a universe, or multiple universes within a universe, hence why it's called a macroverse. So let's get into how big the universe is and what it contains. We'll start small, okay? The planet we live on, Earth. The Earth also has a moon which orbits the Earth, which Piccolo casually destroyed in the early Saiyan saga. Earth itself has a radius of 6,371 kilometers. And if you take into consideration that planet Vegeta had a higher gravity pull than Earth, you'd have to say it's got to be either the same size or bigger. And as witnessed by the destruction of planet Vegeta by a first form freezer sitting casually in his chair, it's not hard to believe that in his final form at 100%, which is 226 times more powerful than his first form, that he could blow up the sun, which is only 109 times the diameter of planet Earth. Both the Earth and the sun belong to the solar system, as well as other planets. And in the furthest reach of the solar system is the Oort cloud, which is estimated to be 1.87 light years away. Pretty big, huh? In the Cell game, Cell threatens to blow up the solar system, and it's not hard to believe that's beyond his power. Next on the scale is galaxies, and there are estimated to be as many as 100 billion solar systems in the Milky Way galaxy alone. And it's stated by the Kais in the Boo Saga that when the first form of Majin Buu was terrorising the universe, he was taking it out, galaxy at a time. So, on to universes. In the universe, there is estimated to be 100 to 200 billion galaxies. Now... In Dragon Ball, the universe in Dragon Ball is three times the size of our current universe. And as witnessed in the Battle of God's Ark, when Goku and Beerus clash, and Goku is in his Super Saiyan God form, and they have a clash of fists, the shockwaves from that clash ripple throughout the universes, destroying solar systems and galaxies and are shaken the very foundations of the universe to the extent that Eldar and Supreme Kai are saying one more hit is going to destroy the universe and they are doing this with a simple punch and any Dragon Ball fan knows that the characters in Dragon Ball have much stronger attacks than punch, such as key attacks. Imagine the sheer force of a Super Saiyan God, Kamehameha. And then, just to blow your mind, a Super Saiyan Blue, Kaioken times 10, Kamehameha. The destructive capacity that this attack withholds. So it is quite clear to say that Goku and Vegeta with their god key, are quite clearly multiversal busters. So guys, if you've enjoyed my explanation of the macroverse, please subscribe to my channel, universe bust that damn like button, and comment in the comment section and let me know what you think. And just remember guys, if anybody, anybody tells you that Goku and Vegeta are only
planet busters. Hell, if they tell you that they're only solar system busters or galaxy busters. Staying calm at that person that talks shit will only ensure that you never, e e ever become a Super Saiyan.